I'm Tim Brander. Welcome to Capital Views. We're here with Duff Mitchell of the Alaska Independent Power uh, Producers Association. And Duff, um, everybody is interested in energy. And you, your group consists of a lot of small scale, a lot of small operators. And it seems to me that small entrepreneurial companies are very creative in coming up with new energy technologies. And uh, maybe you could mention a couple of them. Sure. Um, the smaller people, smaller independent power producers are looking at ocean kinetic where you're trying to harvest things out of the river. We have some folks taking solar cells and actually charging in the batteries for energy storage so that can be integrated into the grid which is very innovative and people don't think solar works but we're already using solar in cell towers and other applications and it looks very promising in some rural locations. And then in southeast Alaska we're looking at uh, you know using uh, seawater heat pumps integrating it with electricity to uh, produce lower cost heating. So Duff in, in the case of solar um, uh, I've heard in the summer of course we have lots of sun in winter we have less sun, but I've heard in northwest Alaska, for example, solar is used in isolated cases to heat building, but they actually get a, a, lot, of, um, a lot of power in March. They get the snow bounce right. off the snow. And uh, maybe, could, could you explain the, the cell tower connection though, the, um, uh, the solar, uh, you know, providing solar to a community that you just you mentioned a few minutes ago. Yeah, the battery storage technology has just taken light wave advances. And so some of this technology is now weaving its way into Alaska with some of the more entrepreneurial folks. And you take a cell tower, or like the cell towers have historically been very remote, very expensive to fly in fuel, and so they've been looking for creative solutions where you can use natural resources that are sustainable. And so uh, this is just an adaptation and a growth of that smaller to a next level scale where you can have bigger bigger battery storage, more solar panels, and then you can integrate it in with your local grid. How, how big a, a grid could something like this feed into? Oh, we're talking 250 kilowatts, 500, 500 kilowatts. I mean, they're, they're small, but they're enough to heat up and to, and to, and to produce something for, uh, you know, some, some of our smaller communities. It, would, it, could, it could have some uh, very strong economic advantages over diesel, diesel generation. It could, could it be a community like um, like 200 people, do you oh, think? Yeah. Or, oh, oh, yeah. Usually that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So now, the, it won't replace diesel, but it will, but it will supplement. It will supplement. Home. Yeah. So the solar, the solar is, is charges up batteries, and then the batteries provide the feed into the grid. Correct. To supplement diesel. It can go direct and then battery storage when it when you know for use later. Yeah. yeah. Is this a new type of battery that's being developed? You know, I don't know the I don't know the technology suite. I've been involved with the folks that are trying to get through the regulatory processes to get yeah. abilities to even be in business. That's it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well now Del, talking about uh, uh, heat loops, I know in Fairbanks there's a district heating concept where steam is pumped around downtown uh, Fairbanks. And I think this is being done a couple of other places in Alaska. But you're, um, there's a concept of using uh, heat pumps, the, the water from the channel to heat, provide heat that could be transferred to the downtown uh, buildings. Absolutely, it's already being done in Norway, and so we're taking that technology. It started here in Juneau with the Ted Stevens Research Center, where we've taken seawater heat pump systems, and it heats the entire Ted Stevens Research Center. So how does a heat pump work? Heat pump takes water out of out of the the salt water, and it steals, takes out, scavenges, however you want to use the term, four or five degrees of the water, brings up enough volume, compresses it up, moves it up to a higher heat level, so it's at the Ted Stevens Research Center, it's bringing to 120 to 140 degrees. What we would be doing in downtown Juneau is needing 180 to 190 degrees, and then that hot water is pumped around in a district heating system. Uh, to heat buildings and, and residences at a much lower cost than, than, than from diesel or perhaps even from natural gas. That, that's the concept. What is the temperature of the water in the, in the, in the seawater? It could be as low as uh, 35 degrees. And so between 35 and 45 degrees at a very deep level, that's just perfect. So you extract the, the, the differences in the, in the heat and then use that to heat up the, uh, the water at the surface. Right, and that, it's through the heat pump. It's basically like a backwards refrigerator. 
So if you could visualize the inside of the channel being, or the channel being the inside of your refrigerator, and those hot coils on the back that are producing heat, that's the, that's the business end that's being used to percolate the water. Well, that's interesting. And I hear that's being done in Seward, too, or at least a variation of it is being done Yeah, in Seward. Seward has been a, a, a world leader in this. And so this is really an Alaskan technology that's coming to bear fruit full circle. Now, you, it started here in Juneau? Uh, Ted Stevens Research Center, really? right out there at Lena Cove. And when when did when was it done there? It's been a few. It's been a several years ago that they, you know, the guys that worked out there, John Cooper and his team, and some other folks, and they they put it together and and got Noah to fund the budget, and uh, they put it in there, and by golly, it works. It saved them, I think, the first year, three hundred thousand dollars of diesel. That's amazing. So this is an Alaska technology developed right here. Yeah. And uh, you wonder what else we can do. You know, there's I've heard of things like. Um, you know, power being used to heat ceramic bricks now to heat homes. That's being experimented with in Western Alaska. Yeah. A lot of innovation, a lot of ideas when you turn those creative energies loose. You know, we're, we're, we're given so many resources here, and, and some of the resources are, are our people. And the entrepreneurial spirit of Alaska, I think, is alive and well, and people aren't afraid to take risks and go out there and try to do something. I think it's, I think it's an interesting time. Yeah, it's a I, fun time. I agree. Well, Duff, thanks for joining us. Thank uh, you, Tim. I'm Tim Bradner. I'm with Duff Mitchell of the Alaska Independent Power Producers Association. Thank you, and thank you for joining us on Capital Views. Thank you.